Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at Motorcycle Park in the mighty Metropolis of Marnie, Iowa. And look what I got here today. This is a brand spanking new, well actually it's got 400 miles, Royal Enfield Himalayan 452 or 450, whichever you prefer. Check that out. A friend of mine bought this, I think he picked it up Friday. Today is, I think it's Tuesday. And he's got about 400 miles in. We just did the first service on it. This morning the oil changed. There's no valve adjustment on the first service anymore. But check that hot rod out. Isn't that just gorgeous? He and I are going to be out in Colorado on bikes like he's going to have this one. I'm going to have mine for the one I've been riding anyway. Yeah, we're going to head out there Sunday or I'm going to head out there Sunday. I think he's heading out sooner, but just check this hot rod out. He's got this nifty little bag up here. He's got the uh, this on the seat. He's left the boot rubbers in and he's also I took those out of mine. He's also got the short windshield now. So what is it? Royal Enfield Himalayan. ADV bike. It's the Royal Enfield. It's a three, I'm sorry, 452 cc single cylinder dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, liquid cooled hot rod engine. Makes about 40 horsepower, about 30 foot pounds of torque. That's about uh, 40 newton meters. All runs through this incredibly smooth, incredibly smooth. Just magical six speed transmission now. Gorgeous engine, fabulous running, flat torque curve. Beautiful, beautiful shifting. Anyway, <laughs> on and on and on, right? 43 millimeter inverted forks, upside down forks. There's about 7.9 or eight inches of travel there. That's about 200 millimeters. It's got a 21 inch 90-90 tire on the front, spoke wheels on this model, 320 millimeter disc brake on the front with a dual piston and vibrary caliper, much improved brakes, ABS. Check that out. LED headlight, LED turn signals. Just one gorgeous machine, isn't it? Look at that thing. On the back, it too is an eight inch travel, 200 millimeters uh, monoshock, 270 millimeter disc on the rear with a single piston vibro caliper. This has ABS also, but you can shut it off on the back. So you can turn off the uh, ABS in the back. Hey, check it out. Center stand, <laughs> stock center stand. Uh, seat height on these in high he has it in high position I think it's uh, about 33 inches or about uh, 845 millimeters you can drop it down to 825 millimeters or about 20 or 32 and a half inches if you want and then they also make a low seat now I haven't seen that yet but when that comes out we'll uh, check it out tank holds it says four and a half gallons but I ran mine out of gas and I uh, when I filled it it took 4.01 gallons so it's a four four useful gallons of fuel so it's supposed to be 17 liters. I'm guessing it's more like uh, 15. Just a fun machine. The wheelbase is, uh, let me think about that one, 59.4 inches or about 1,510 millimeters. Wet weight on this hot rod is 430 pounds or about 195 kilograms. So a little lighter than the last one, a little lighter than the last one. Ground clearance is uh, about nine inches or 230 millimeters. Just a gorgeous machine. So the difference between this one and mine that we, you should be aware of right away, he put he left the boot rubbers in. I've never rode a bike other than this one with the boot rubbers in. I, uh, these are removed on mine. He also put this uh, seat cover on. These are my Noru gloves. Let's get those out of the way. He's added grip puppies. These are kind of a foam thing. Yeah, they, he puts those on most of his bikes and uh, they help dampen vibration, give you a little bit wider thing to, to grab onto. This is a bag for uh, Essentials. This is a mount for his uh, Garmin XP, XT I think they're called. And he's also got the short windshield compared to mine. He is, uh, so this is one of two Himalayans. He's gonna, his other Himalayan hasn't come in yet. And that one's gonna do, he's gonna do something different with it. We'll talk about that yeah. soon. But I'm gonna put some gear on. We're gonna take this little hot rod for a ride. Wow. Okay, something I wanna point out right away. When we first got these bikes, we were having trouble getting them to go from a stop. Um, the, the fueling was kind of wonky. And uh, we got back and uh, one of our guys here rode it and he said, hey, look at this guys. When you let the clutch out, listen to the fueling. I'm not touching the gas. It actually gives the motorcycle just a little bit of gas. Check that out. Pulls itself away right there. Isn't that amazing? Can we put around? I'm not giving it any gas right now. Look at that. <laughs> that is with me giving it zero input. And uh, that's kind of a neat thing. I guess that's a new age. This is a wireless, you know, fly-by-wire system. There's no cable that goes from the uh, gas to the uh, fuel body or on this hot rod. We'll go up here and give it the old spin test. Da, da, da. Look at that. Look at that. No troubles at all. <laughs> what a dream. What a dream. 
Excellent clutch on here, by the way. Loads of power for pickup. I like it. I like it a lot. One of the questions I got online was, uh, they'd heard that uh, after 1,000 to 1,500 miles, the bike smooths out. I couldn't answer that because we had so much fun at those, at those we were on Wyoming and Colorado and all those places. Uh, this bike has 400 miles and it does seem a little rougher than mine. So I do think that statement is true. They do smooth out when they get some more miles on them. This thing really is a, a great riding bike. Let's do the old figure eight test here. 59.4 inch wheelbase. That's 1510 millimeters. Look at that. Excellent, <laughs> excellent clutch control. If I watch where I'm driving, right? But look at that, isn't that cool? Terrific pickup. We're good. Welcome to South Marnie by Gully. What a uh, great handling motorcycle. It, it works so well. It just works so well. I'm in love with these things. I don't know if you all have noticed that. I rode one of these a uh, thousand miles a couple days ago. I did that on one day. I was pretty proud of that event. <laughs> just check this out. Just look at this. Just absolutely, you know. Stellar. Not too darn bad for a 40 horsepower motor, huh? I'm a liking it. I'm a liking it. The brakes on these things are uh, just fabulous. 320 millimeter disc on the front with that dual piston vibrary caliper. Pretty good sound too. We were talking about the sound this morning. Um, I like the stock pipe and uh, I think I'm going to get a cat delete when that comes in. He was thinking the same thing. Baxter's does have an AEW pipe for this, a really neat looking one. Maybe one of us should try one of those, huh? <laughs> I call this the bridge test. Check it out. No trouble at all, by gully. What a dream, what a dream. Let's see if we can do the hill spin test. Check this out. Just a great handling bike. Absolutely love this thing. Next time you all are in the mighty Metropolis of Marnie, Iowa, get yourself over here, right there, to the derailed grill. Try one of their Wahoo Burgers. <laughs> simmer down, simmer down. So, um, sitting position in this, it feels like my knees are slightly lower than my hips. My heels are definitely farther back than my knees. I feel like there's a very tight triangle between the hip, the knee, and the uh, heel. It's a little, it feels a little tight. Now, having said that, I took this on a thousand mile ride and that just was not one of my problems. As far as seating goes, you sit almost upright, but leaning forward slightly. I've got a very relaxed arm position. You know, my, my uh, upper arms are almost near, right up against my body. And then my lower arms are almost, I would say they're almost, they're flat with the elbows up a little bit, maybe. How's that sound? Very nice, very comfortable. As far as handling goes, and I put a lot of miles on this, I can tell you about handling. In, uh, in the garage, it's easy to push around. It's got a very low center of gravity. I'm gonna say this again. I think this has a lower center of gravity than the old 411. And uh, I've got a lot of time on the old 411. I rode that uh, 31,000 miles, you know. And I've got a lot of time on these. I've got over 3,600 on one of these. So I think I can make that statement in good faith. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you know, it handles really well, um, but you know, easy to push in and out of the garage. It, uh, as far as the parking lot goes or riding slow like this, it's very manageable, very, very uh, compliant, very easy going, very well mannered. How's that sound? Driving around town like this, well, again, it just does it well. Um, it shines, it does very good on two lane blacktop and the real surprise is how well it does on the interstate. I have taken, I rode to Davenport and back, that was a 500 mile ride, all interstate. I drove this up to uh, some place in North Dakota and that was a thousand mile round trip in one day. Check out this bike. There we are in the looking glass. Look at that thing, isn't that beauty? Casa, I think that's Casa Brown they call it. Casa is a pass in India if I got that right. So 33 inch seat, I'm sitting on, I've got a 30 inch inseam, I'm five foot eight tall, and I cannot flat foot it, but I'm not bothered by that at all. 
very manageable motorcycle. Good looking bike too. Me gusta, me gusta mucho. So uh, back to that thousand mile ride. Let me tell you about that. That was a that was an amazing event. I got up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Actually, I did a video about that. If you'd like to watch that video, it's uh, I I did a, I talked about the event after afterwards and how I felt about the bike and the event and how I handled all of it and uh, anyway the bike did very well it's such a comfortable machine you know oh hey we haven't talked about the dirt we picked up two of these in Utah we took them all over you well, parts of Utah into Wyoming Colorado back into Wyoming Colorado Wyoming Colorado back into Wyoming and then over through Nebraska we did a bunch of uh, dirt roads a bunch of gravel we did a bunch of rock roads we did everything but uh, deep mud sand and uh, pea gravel and the bike performed fabulously, just absolutely fabulous. Look at this. Turns like a dream. Um, Off-road handling was superb. We even challenged some cows, you know. We uh, drove through fields covered in rocks. We drove up a road covered in baby heads. Baby heads are rocks about the size of a baby head. And the bike just, you know, it performed flawlessly, you know. Is it a perfect motorcycle? Now there's a couple things about it that need to be improved. And I've got a video, I think I'm going to call it the uh, problems with the Himalaya. I'll have that coming out soon, I hope. It's hard for a fanboy like me to make a video like that, but uh, I will do that. Now, if y'all are interested in newer used Royal Enfield Himalayan like this one, Triumph classic British bike of any type, get yourself over here to Baxter Cycle in the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie. They got gear, they got accessories, they got coats, they got everything you could possibly want. Thingamajigs, doodads, by golly, they got it all. If you can't make it to Marnie, go to BaxterCycle.com. Make sure you tell those fine folks that Fuzzy Biker sent you. Hey, you know what? We haven't gone through Exhaust Pipe Alley on one of these. Here we go. Exhaust Pipe Alley. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I love doing that. Hey, my friends, life is good. Life is good. Get yourselves out there and ride. Live it. Live it to the fullest. I am going to park this hot rod and get back on my own motorcycle and go for a ride. Wahoo! I did have a hamburger for supper last night.